Hello everyone. I'm looking forward to today's episode because who doesn't like a good plate of nachos? And I'm making these plant-based, but yet they're still going to taste awesome. I'm looking forward to having them for lunch today. And I also wanted to give you a view of my parrot hanging in the sunroom. So let's get to the kitchen and make some nachos. All right, so for these nachos, we're gonna need chipotle black bean crumbles by Morningstar. They're really good, full of flavor. So I have all my ingredients ready to go over to the stove. Okay, I have a quarter cup of broth in the pan to saute the onions until they get nice and soft. I'm gonna add some garlic. I have about a heaping teaspoon of garlic in there. All right, I'm gonna throw in my chipotle crumbles. Add a little bit more broth. So my chipotle crumbles were in the freezer, so I'm just gonna cook this for a few more minutes to make sure that they get thawed and heated properly before adding the rest of the ingredients. While that's cooking down, I'm gonna take the rest of my broth, and I started with a cup and a quarter cup. So one and a quarter cups worth of broth. I am going to whisk in my chickpea flour, my nutritional yeast, a quarter cup, half a tablespoon of smoked paprika, Half a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of cumin. Okay, I want to make sure this is blended really well before adding it to the pan. And we're going to just let this thicken up for a little bit. And the flour component and the nutritional yeast will help it thicken up just like that. Once your consistency gets pretty thick, this is when you add your salsa of choice. And that's about a half a cup of salsa I added. As you can see, this is gonna make enough for an entire plate of nachos and some leftovers that we can have nachos again in another few days. Yum. Okay, I turned my stove off. I'm gonna let it sit because it's too hot to eat right now anyway. And while it's cooling, it will continue to thicken up some more. And now I'm gonna go prep the vegetables for the top of the nachos. So obviously with nacho toppings, it's kind of a personal preference. People put all kinds of things on them, black olives, lettuce, tomato, jalapenos, you name it, you can put on top of nachos. Today I cut up some peppers from my garden um, homegrown, so of course those are good to have on my nachos. A scallion, some jalapenos, I cut them up because I don't like a whole jalapeno at once in my mouth, it's a little too spicy. Um, and cilantro, so instead of lettuce I'm putting cilantro on. So I have my plate of nachos and I'm simply going to pour over my, my home queso and throw on some toppings. And in case you're wondering, no, I am not eating all of these nachos all by myself. <laughs> Brian is home and patiently waiting for a plate full of nachos to share with me. And again, I wish you could smell through a camera because these smell so good. Loki, are you bored with my cooking? Yummy. Oh my goodness. Cilantro. I just feel like cilantro has got to go on every Mexican item I make. <laughs> cilantro is very good for you too, but it's just got a taste I love. All right. Look at that. Of course, you can serve it with guacamole. Mmm. 
So good. Definitely a great substitute for restaurant nachos. And the worst part about these nachos is simply a few chips that are fried. It's definitely another party for my taste buds. Or it's definitely another fiesta for my taste buds. So I hope you give this a try. I think you'll be very surprised at how wonderful a plant-based nacho plate can be. Do I go feed Brian? Come on, we'll go share with Brian.